Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Casa Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mogulover. But right now, we got to talk about Obama's government. With the power struggle against Matanga now finally dealt with, Mitsu Oyango Obama sent to the top of the mountain, ready to lead Kenya and all the wider Africa towards his destiny. Moreover, that Mitsu has not gotten to this position alone, for all around him are scores of loyal allies and devotees that would follow the Mitsu to hack and back to fulfill their dream. Although Mitsu Obama could easily continue to rule alone. He's in a position now to formally delegate many of the lesser functions of statecraft to his low advisors and aides headed by his right-hand man, the ever-loyal Dedan Kimathi, leaving his time more free to perform the tasks and duties fitting of the prophetic Nzi that is, that is he. Of course, Obama has no need for himself, however, for a man of his talents and his splendor can easily run this whole nation, nay, this whole continent by himself as well. What shall that Nzi decide? Only Obama means only Obama. Oh, we get Obama to lead everything. Minister of the Interior. Let's see, economy minister, uh, and then foreign minister. Um, it's not bad, it's not great. Obama's ministers will keep the MC unoccupied with such media tasks. Uh, let's see, we've got some comments to go through as well. Honestly, it's not looking too bad. More construction speed, research speed, factory output. What are you, itotote? You lose an organization which I don't like. I mean, only Obama. Seems like a really bad idea to do. But at this point, whatever. We'll probably just go all the way with him, right? Obama, Obama, thanks, Obama. The black heart of a dying imperial stream. The fat drug addicted crowd that lords over the heart of coastal East Africa has long been an enemy of any and all true sons and daughters of Africa, no matter the nation and peoples they hail from. Heaven Goring is a tyrant and a greed fueled Mzungu that has led the heartland of the Bantu people to ruin. His hands bear the crimson stains of innocent blood that he has spilled. Men, women, and children slaughtered by the thousands, ground up in the dark and twisted machine that was the middle African monstrosity, and what is now his putrid excuse for a personal fiefdom, Goringia. We can simply ignore his pet uh, petulant rage, or rampage, hiding away in the mountain fortresses and redoubts that dot the Kenyan highlands, but that's no, that is no legacy for the KL KFLA to bear. And so we could ride in Dar es Salaam and topple Goring's vile regime once and for all, slaying the largest beast of German Pilsen with one, fell, uh, one swift blow. Of course, doing still new dawn. Um, I think I read this one last time, so maybe I didn't, maybe I did. If we read this one again, please go ahead, and there you go. Um, I don't know. I've got some comments to go through, like, I've got six days left. Also, like, I did, truth be honest, I'll be honest with you guys, like, I did use Consequence, because I got tired of this. I should have waited, as one of the comments did say, to invade these guys and stuff like that, but I'm just tired of it. I, 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 I'm sick and tired of, like, sometimes how this is, you know, made to function. Sometimes it's supposed to be balanced, sometimes it's just really not, so. Um, uh, we'll write Dar, Dar Salaam. Do we not get that later on? That's my biggest question. Because we have four divisions. And these guys are not going to be easy, but I mean, I'm here for the story. I mean, for the most part, for Kaiser Redux, so. Uh, screw it. I don't know if we can get cores later on or not, so that's why we have to go do it, so. So we did use Consequence for this, but even then, this is pretty ridiculous, I'll be honest. This is not great. Go in if you can, but like, this is stupid. Yeah, this is really bad. Especially when Ethiopia cannot win over here. So, it literally makes no sense to me. But, you know, who am I? I'm just a guy on the internet. Online? On the line? Uh, someone says, only Obama gave you 2008 political power. I think you can see why that's comical. Someone says, he should. I should not take a focus while fighting Somalia. Or Somalia? Yeah, that's true. But at the same time, if we don't act fast, we're, we won't have time to act. So, mm, yes, Obama momentum. Fate of Uganda? No, it is no de... To no de way. It is not de way. Someone says, explain the complicated part of playing as NPA and, you know, I just want to make sure I do it right, you know, before I play that campaign. Someone says, ah, yes, the Rothschild family, nothing interesting about them. Oh, yes, yes, pretty much. Certified Obama moment, says someone else. Someone, uh, says, Obama's last name. It's care. Thanks, Obama. Someone says, Obama, change for Africa we can believe in. Obama, Oma, Mau Mau. Pretty much. So, this is dumb. I did, like, do the divisions, but... Apparently not all of them, so I do apologize for that. I, like I said, at this point in the in my Hoy for like life, I guess you call it a career. Probably not. Um, I, I'm, I don't want too many BS challenging things. Like this is we don't get. Do we have military access to here? We should have military access to here, right? Do we not? We do. But I, I'm just tired of this. I'm just tired of like stupid things like this. But it is Kaiser Redux, so I'm gonna do some funky stuff off screen to make sure that Somalia should appropriately die. A traitor meets a fitting end. As the blood curling screams and explosive sounds of gunfire crept closer to Kenyatta's compound, the shaking traitor to the Mau Mau's righteous cause trembled behind a wall of Ascari troops, fearing the worst as the sickening wet thumps of Panga knives hacked in flesh grew ever louder from outside his final hiding place. With each passing minute, 
Jomo only grew more anxious, wide-eyed, and feral in his fear as the terror squads of the Malmal and their path of utter destruction reached him. The pure, unyielding hatred for the man that betrayed the great leader and everything the Malmal and the Kenyan people hold dear when he bent the knee to the foreign colonizers. It was decades ago, after the fires of the Valkyrie, when Kenyatta departed from the young Kikuyus and the predecessor organizations at birth a rebellion. Though he claimed it was a, to find a peaceful, peaceful way for our people and all of African people to be free, we know better. Kenyatta is a liar and a scoundrel that abandoned our infantile movement to save his own skin as he languished under the imperial yoke beside us. Well, today he shall receive his role and justice. With the sounds of the maelstrom that unfolded outside his final bastion subsiding, Jumo breathed a sigh of relief, believing if even just for a second, his troops were victorious. Then all hope faded in a flash of white phosphorus and hell fire. After seconds that felt like millennia, Kenyatta opened his eyes after a cacophony of noise light and vitriolic chemicals drowned out his senses and blocked the roar from his perception. Shocked only to see the bloodied, mutilated corpses of his loyal Asca Ascari guards strewn about the shack, he decided to make his valiant last stand. Then, in a flash, it was over. Without a final grandiose speech or apology, even without a final word, the leading Mao Mao gorilla stepped forward before Kenyatta could even clearly make sense of his newly demolished surroundings and decapitated. The traitors sink in one quick action. A far too quick death for the scum, Jomo Kenyatta's last words were but a few whimpers, mixed with the smell of him relieving himself in panic and sound of cold steel meeting the flesh of a vile pig. He may have borne the name of her people, but he was no true Kenyan. Also, we are war with Goring. Oh, uh, Kenyan were born, okay. Um, there are, actually, we're doing... And this is fair. Like, like I need to constantly against these guys, so... Um, we're doing... We're doing okay. I did take out Somalia, because I don't think... Ethiopia sucks. I don't know why they're so bad. I guess I guess it's because of... Uh, this one, Army of Levies. Which is god-awful. But at the same time, they... Honestly, that's not... Too much of an excuse, in my own personal opinion, for why they were losing so badly. The AI just sucks. But, can you reborn. Our revolution's finally proven triumphant. Our war-torn and ragged forces now know the sweet taste of victory and freedom now. A free and solid Kenyan stands... Uh, Kenyan state stands over the ashes of the fallen colonial abomination, a so called free state. Kenya now, once again and rightfully, belongs to the Kenyans, and we and we shall all die before we lose these lands and imperial dogs to foreign invaders again. Harambi. Rebuild them, which is not bad, or Obama's Pan Africa. I should build it first. The Kenyan land and freedom army, as they were more widely known as the Malmao, served valiantly in both the great uprisings. Somehow, being an industrial superpower with decades old rifles, rusty knives, and farming tools, however, these archaic weapons will not serve us so well in the coming wars of tomorrow, and so the KLFA must adapt and evolve, lest all Kenya becomes as as they are. Followed up with Obama's Pan Africa. MC Onyango Obama now rules solidly over the newly freed Kenyan people, and now seeks to spread his message to all oppressed sons and daughters of the sanctified continent of Africa. And his prophetic rule, all true Africans shoot soon shall feel the refreshing breeze of freedom as we swoop down from these mountains. The spirit of humanity, and take the mother continent from these imperialist hordes. Oh, these guys a harsh reality. The reality of modern Kenya has been that of war. Oh, well, crap. Well, you know what? Screw it. I'm taking all goring gear. I don't care what anyone wants. No, no, take it, take it, take it, take it. The ideas of our current state and creed were birthed in the first great uprising. The current regime and the man we follow today both took the reins of power only after Middle Africa collapsed into chaos, and we ourselves took up arms in a second time to bloodily throw off the yoke of our former slave masters. And now as our state gears up for war yet again and reclaims some long forgotten or long lost strip of jungle in the sand, we shall know war once again. This harsh, bloodied stain reality must be known to all Kenyans, for it's this struggle with this harsh and painful reality that has given us a gift of freedom. Without war, without sacrifice, without the screams of death, our nation and our people would be not but ash and blood splattered across the rocky peaks of Mount Kenya. It has become a comfort to our people. The sounds of artillery fire and the smell of gunpowder are but the mere lullabies to our battle-hardened, steel-eyed people. It has been the reality of our birth, and it shall be the reality of our continued life, for if our guard were to drop even for a moment, we would be beset upon by the unknowable, unknowable wolves who stalk us like lambs, waiting for slaughter. War is all we know and all we can thank for who we are and what we stand for today. War is all we can thank for our continued future. War is comfortable and safe because war never changes. Oh yes, please. Nice. Beta Somalia. War propaganda. We're already in war economy, which is not bad. Ching Imperial Authority. Alright, that's nice for those guys. Ten Tanjanika. No, we're good. We can control the uh, territories of the former diverse state of Somalia and this an inhospitable area populated by the Somalis. It proved itself to be hard to maintain throughout through occupation. Maybe we should let the Somalis organize themselves to an extent. No, kill them off. Seriously, kill them off. I don't know why they're so they look like kind of overpowered and no, I don't want to deal with them. No one should have to deal with them. And you're gonna have to kill them all off too. That was dumb. 
Yeah, just way too strong. They're way too strong when they can fight Ethiopia and us at the same time and still pretty much win. Like, dumb. Dumb. Stupid. But yeah, like I said for a third time, I'm pretty much done with doing like really, really difficult things. So, and hope for. I don't know, maybe on occasion I will, but like, at some point, I just want to have fun. And struggling an extreme amount is not fun. Actually, can we go to war with these guys? I can just find them. You might as well. I mean, we got the political power for it. Thank you, sir. Militia, huh? We got a lot of guns now. We need more motorized, though. We just need more stuff in general. We had Rwanda. After the liberation of Rwanda from the German colonial grip, we are left with the choice to let Rwandans govern themselves or to an extent or should we not? Nah. We're smart. We're smart on that. Pan Africa. Oh, okay. Nationalism. Ooh, more daily pickle power war sport. Kenyan militarization. Nice. Honor the founder. March of Middle Africa's rotting corpse. Or weaponized our waters. Organized army. It looks pretty good. Reform the militias. You lose a 10% organization. You get less weight to less attack. Oh no. Yeah, no, we gotta go to reform the militias. Or forge them. Mass assault, mobile warfare. Oh, we get mobile warfare? Oh. Oh well. Yeah, why do we get that? I mean, why didn't. Uh, I guess I think we've seen that earlier, but whatever. I'm gonna grab battle plan anyways. That's not bad. Oh, actually, yeah. I mean, we can't use that anyways. You get minus 10% division attack and organization. So you end up with minus 5% attack and organization. You get quite a bit more defense. But you get even more organization. And even more organization. So that's not bad. That's where our militias. Well, the ragtag group of farmers and laborers that won us our independence were surely the bravest generation of people have ever known. The victory over the Imperial's dogs was pure luck. Kenya's future cannot be gambled away on the backs of the aging farmers again, and so Kenya requires a modern, organized, and professional army. The militias will be disbanded with a professional army raised in its place for numbers and zeal may have won as our first fight, but the next fight will be won with careful planning and overwhelming firepower. Self-sufficiency. Black internationalism. Nice. The divine leader. Oh, Burundi. Thank you. Mm, let's go with militarization. The gunsmith's factories and assembly lines of our nation must come alive with more energy and haste than ever before. For Kenya needs a military now more than ever. Farming tools and decades old rifles may have been enough to earn us our independence, but we'll need more than sickles and glorified muskets if we are to truly liberate all those who can't answer the call of our pan-African dream. We'll blacken the skies and bore deep into the earth of our totalist Eden, slowing it if we must, for smog and debris can be cleared out just as easily as the dead once our homeland is safe. What do you have over here? We have economy. Burundi. Oh. We have now annexed Burundi, part of the former German colony of Tanganyika. Should we restore the Burundi independence and let them manage their own lands? What, what the fuck ding dong do you take me for? I hate that we can't convert these guys. Six, one, two. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, infantry. Do we need that template? Six. Real cab. Reforge militias. Getting militarization. Yeah. That I didn't realize that that was so bad. Wait, unconventional army. Remove improvised weaponry. Huh. Huh. I don't see anything there. Weaponized are waters. Kenyan nationalism. 
Though they may be here on the dark continent, have proven themselves worthy. Stealing themselves against unending and torturous tides of capitalists and imperialist dogs that batter this Eden so, none stand more proud and worthy than the very peoples of Kenya. With well, the brave is the most righteous among us, a Kikiyu, serving as a pinnacle of our and all African peoples, the Kenya shall finally prosper or prosper as these truest children of Africa guide us in the right direction as we build a modern, respectful state on the horn. No longer shall lesser races stop of we, the true progenitors of humankind, lords of the creative humanity. Nice. Africa supply hubs. Honestly, if this is Africa, like, I complained last episode, but if they're not going to have any supply hubs, just to get rid of them. Like, it doesn't make any sense then. Actually, how many more days do we have until we can go to war with them? Oh, a week. Where's Public? Anti Goring Pact. Oh, Zanzibar and Madagascar. Alright. Emil Moris. Ah, yes, Emil. I don't think we have any more claims on anybody here, so. Cool. Zanzibar, honor the founder. Mincy Obama, the founder of the Kenya Land and Freedom Army and the prophetic Messiah of the Mau Mau, has the most respected and revered man in the nation. But even that is not enough. He is our muse, our protector, our shepherd, unmatched in the importance of, to the freedom we now enjoy and instrumental to all we hold dear. The people of Kenya shall forever owe a debt to this hero of heroes, but all relevance must start somewhere. Obama is and forever will be the faith of our people, the spirit of our nation, in every avenue. Or, or, or will be featuring his face, and every building will house his bust or figure and statue. For no single man is more to be respected within our boundaries. Our borders, Kenya, oh, Obama, as for, is and forever will be the heart, soul, and the very essence of Kenya. Guys, you have to go in. Don't get me wrong, going to war is still good for army XP, though, so. Tabora. Oh. Well, there you go, second Valkyrie. Not bad. Oh, thank God. Ninety-five, not bad. Got some cop here as well. There we go. Nice. Honor the founder, March. The rotting and petulant corpse out of middle of Africa is a dead man walking, its day's number is a shambles along in borrowed time, guarding all those who dare defy its unending hunger into its insatiable greed fueled maw. It's our duty, destiny, to eradicate this cancerous and hedonistic hive of scum and villainy from the earth, cleansing this hollow continent of this imperialist filth. We have marched for Dar es Salaam for all of Africa. In preparation for the second Bantu expedition, millennia ago. During the first Bantu expedition, thousands of pro Bantu speaking groups poured out of the heart of Africa from within modern day Cameroon and Nigeria, spreading out across the sub Saharan expanse and populating this continent with their kin. Until centuries later, we stand here in Kenya as their descendants and heirs of the civilization's spreading legacy. Surrounded by lesser Nilotic and Afro Asiatic savages, our greatness is constantly beset and dragged down by the vermin who we are forced to share our borders with to alleviate this distress and the grievances our people deal with as a result of sharing their living space with these savages. A slew of pro Bantu legislation shall be passed, further reviving and emphasizing Bantu culture while uplifting groups like the mighty Kiyuku or Kikiuyu and the less numerous cousins like the Kisi. Kamba, Meru, and the Mijikenda above the station of their non Bantu compatriots. Even the Arab blooded, blooded half breeds are, that are now the Swahili tribe shall be granted some semblance of higher rights and privileges over the non Bantu savages, leaving groups like the Maasai and the Arabs to wallow rightfully at the bottom of a new hierarchy. The age of the Bantu is returning to Kenya, and those not of our ancestors' blood shall face justice for the crimes and slates against our pure and noble peoples, for this is but the first step to a resurgence. We are the heirs of the first children of Africa. I don't think we really need more political power, but okay. Manili. Let's 
So the occupation is going to be pretty nice. And we've got about 19 days left, which is pretty good. French National Workers' Day Day. Oh, hello, Marcel Bucard. Oh, wow. An obedient society. Oh, well. Depends on organization is perfect. On as the found of punished those of ill birth, with our pro bounty policies quickly taking root and our pure blood of kin whip it into a frenzy of nationalistic fervor and sensual pride. The town take out some of our pent up rage and anger out on those lesser groups who have kept use from greatness like an anchor weighs down a ship. For it seems as though our initial round of measures against these savages did not properly send the right message. They still, despite all of our previous efforts at peaceful negotiations, have proven to be a thorn in the side of a new regime, resisting our rule at every turn. These non bounties are many in number and plague our lands like rats and roaches, sapping our propensity for prosperity as they leech <clears throat> off our national pride and success, from foreigners like Arabs and Avro Asiatics to the Nilotic and Oromo groups like the Masai, Wata, Bon Bajuni, or Okik. These false Kenyans have uh, squandered our political or potential and stabbed, stabbed our people in the back too many times. This treachery and deceit, of course, shall end now. To combat this, a final solution has been concocted to crush these ungrateful tribes once for all. Under the orders of Mzi Matanga, the KLFA, shall march into villages and towns of these pastoralists and hunter gatherers, round of the compliant and useful into groups to be sent off to labor camps with any, while any troublemakers or would be heroes and headaches shall be dealt with in a far more direct and efficient manner. Though the international community may be displeased if they ever catch wind of our actions here, they're far too busy fighting amongst themselves to ever pay mind of a few thousand missing savages. Kenya will be made pure for the heirs of the Bantu deserve no less. Kenya's for the Bantu. All others are leeches. And leeches, yes, they are. Honor thy founder. And weaponize our waters. Using some abandoned outdated ships left behind by the fleeing colonizers, we establish a skeleton of a new art navy. We're taking over the now mothball dockyards and harbors from the former colonial regime while the new dockyards are constructed in Mombasa and elsewhere along the southern coast. We Kenyans will take to the seas and master the rough waves off the Horn of Africa, and all, all in order to defend our revolution and our people. Ah, uh, pretty good. Um, we probably use some planes. Start producing some of those bad boys. Oh. Sick man may now die. Very nice. Why does Zanzibar have to exist? Yeah, weaponizing our waters would probably be best to do next. How's the divisions looking? At least that's good. Cairo axis, huh? Alright, well. Looks like not really much has been going on down here, so. Or up here, I guess, technically. The Austrian Empire looking okay. Like father, like son. During the past two decades, Obama's done nothing but fight. During our years long struggle against the colonialist dogs, Obama fathered a child, Barack. Oh, this is Barack. I was only five, but his father just hardly managed to survive a costly encounter with the Kenyan. Security Council, or Security Forces, really. Uh, in the time of his absence, the young Didan rose Barack as best he could. With Obama's sudden reappearance, the final victory of a Kenya, he has finally truly had the time to be a father to his son. While Obama has only had a few fleeting moments with Barack due to his status as leader, he has begun to teach him the ways of leadership, preparing him for his inheritance. The young Barack has reported taking quite well to his father's lessons, so much so that Obama's granted his young son a small amount of political power. As head of the Electrical and Water Treatment Bureau, a position he is quickly growing into. With uh, good old Barack finally getting a taste of what he'll do when his father passes away. It can perhaps be said that Obama's legacy is more secure. They grow up so fast. Good old Barack. Barack of Barack. The Great Syrian Revolt. Who could have seen that one coming? But happy 1939, everybody. Happy New Year. We're looking okay. Yes, we did use some cons commands here and there, but still. Really, just mostly just here. Not here and there, but just here. Oh, we own this too? Wait, why do we own this? Oh. Legacy of the attacks. A fast attacks. 
While the Mau Mau lacked professionalism, they more than made up for it in speed and maneuverability. With these small unit tactics, paired with light equipment loads and an enviable knowledge of the local terrain, the Malma militia were able to strike like lightning into the heart of the Imperial's soft underbellies and retreat as quickly as they had arrived. These tactics shall be adapted and emulated by a new generation of Liberian soldiers, all trained in the use of modern uh, modern motorized vehicles, and other forms of fast locomotion and relocation, in order to create a new breed of lightning fast war here in Africa. One now pass slow machinations and movements of the remaining Imperial's powers. Oh, do we get cores on these guys? Too? Oh. Oh, we're going to get to war with them. Are they an alliance? You can click. False public. A reclamation of colonial past. During the initial times, or times of initial uprising all that time ago in 1925, the Great Obama became something of a scapegoat for all the problems of the colonial regime. Everything from poor working conditions to stagnating economy, unfulfilled election promises, and even food and water shortages were blamed on either the Malma or the war against us. Being the outspoken leader of our banner freedom fighters, the NSA. Nearly took all the blame. Eventually, the colonials as well as the native kingdoms became accustomed to this finger pointing and began to jokingly blame nearly everything on Obama, using the phrase, Thanks, Obama, when anything went wrong. Eventually, Thanks, Obama began to be even be used by the perfidious white regime, as even members of the government saw the extent to which Obama was blamed, with a victory over the white devil, however. The mountain has seen fit to reclaim this phrase, which has become so common to the Kenyan people, was his advancement. Thanks, Obama has become something of a slogan for the Mau Mau's rule over Kenya. Instead of blaming Obama, the slogan has been turned upside down. Show all the good Obama has done for Kenya and all of Africa. Well, it takes some time for the people to truly turn this phrase into new meaning. In time, Obama shall truly be thanked for all he's done. Thanks, Obama. Thanks. I'll go straight to the center we can. And there goes Syria. More fat. Ooh, that's not bad. Land forts are okay. Not bad. Free land auction, basically, for that one. Sal. Louis de Gonzaga Bobozo. Good old Bobozo. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Why does it take so long to get some more organization? Four, three, two. Support from the Congolese? Well, we'll see. Uh, can it sell sufficiency? Getting needs no others, for all we have is need to survive here within the cradle of humanity. This veritable and expansive eating we call home shall become a beacon of self-sufficiency as we seal ourselves off from the outside world, become the true red spot of Africa. Besides, whatever we cannot find within our highlands and valleys, we can find elsewhere on the expensive continent. For all, Africa is truly and rightfully ours. Sure, guys. Yeah, well, that's fine for now. Wait, why did, how are they spilling over here? I literally said... Like, defend the border, god dang it. That makes no sense. Did they cheat their way over here? How did they get here so fast? Thousand losses versus fourteen hundred. Not very good, honestly. In circle, if you can. If not, it's going to really suck for us. But whatever. Yeah, no, you gotta force the attack, man. Ah, uh, yes. So that's the first. 
Good. Kills guys off. Masters of Kin uh, Kirin Yaga. Or Kirin Yaga, the old Mount Kenya, as the Angles mistakenly refer to it, serves as the greatest symbol of our national pride and as the namesake of our nation itself. Our people have long known its peaks and surrounding slopes, serving as shepherds of these treacherous highlands, and our military force is no exception. Mountain warfare is, is as Kenyan as a Mau Mau, which shall embrace its tradition in earnest, using our mastery of the treacherous terrain to revenge as we slaughter our foes. You, how did you get encircled, you ding dongs? Oh my goodness. Hurry up and kill him off. Come on. There you go, we freed him. Somewhat. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Oh my gosh, how long does it take to destroy this stupid division? Cabinda? Stanleyville? more do we need? No planes yet. Now I take power, which is fine. No one cares. Promotion through duty. Only a truly merit meritocratic system can promote good behavior within an officer's class. The officers of our armed forces shall be promoted based on their service histories, accommodations, awards, and acts of valor. Those may lead to some less than popular soldiers rising to lead these men. Our regime feels that it shall yield the best results when it comes to professionalism and proficiency within the officer corps. Because why not? Keep going in. We got plenty of guns to spare, so. Ah, that's what the capitals can do. Ah, okay, so I don't even care about all the other nations. I'm gonna take whatever I want. I don't. I, I, at this point, I don't really care. Sengier. Council only is good. That's fine. Give him a few days and then we'll go to war with these guys. See if the Mahiri start attacking us like crazy. Oh, they do have unique focus tree. Look at that. <clears throat> Profits, not governance. Wow. Our business is business. Reliance on mercenaries. Oh, wow. Unconventional army, of course. But let's save. Let's see what happens. Oh, we're not going to back. God dang it. Or maybe not. We won't see what happens. 1940 is fine. Not bad. 
cool. A real fighting force. The armed force of Kenyan had come a long way from the bumbling, barely trained farmers armed with pongas and ramshack rifles. Now, uh, the KLFA sends the proud and modern fighting force ready to defend the newly found freed nation to the last man. We now march in the future proudly, knowing that we have the means to defend ourselves finally free from here. For you for fear. Arambe. Go in and around him as well if you can. That'd be great. Now let's make some planes. That'd be great. Hopefully we do well here. If not, you know, that's okay. Still. Oh yeah, there's still guys down here too. Makes sense. Buenda. More breakthrough, more some more soft attack is very good. Not bad. Take the capital. Force it. And now we'll time to go to the river. And then black internationalism. The African Desperaza is a massive with is massive. With millions of true sons and daughters of this kind of being strewn across both the old world and the new. We must rectify this horrible situation or horrific situation by creating our own international. An international for the true and original proletariat of the black race. Linking together elements within Europe, a black belt of the US, Caribbean, and South across South America and beyond, we should reconnect with these lost siblings, forging stronger bonds as we breach the breach of the chains of our oppression of our oppression, finally. And together. Not bad. Here yeah, do this anyway, because you can. No, you stupid idiot. Stop it. Huh. Well, there goes the Retria. Gosh, just kill them off. What the heck is wrong with these guys? Secret Muller? Wait, what? You sound familiar. Hmm. Where have I heard your name from before? Black internationalism. Oh. I don't care, I'm just taking it all. One for this group, and then one for this group. And then the divine leader. And so Obama's a titanic figure. Evolving will pass the point of being a mere man or mortal and has become an idea. Obama stands there the people of Kenya and Africa as a demigod and your mythical being. 
of being un of untold influence and, and control over the souls. Obama's risen to become an, av an avatar of anti-imperialism and totalism himself, channeling the hate that has accumulated throughout the long centuries of, of oppression into a physical and effective political and cultural movement. The M's Grand MC, MC has become the soul of Africa itself as he champions to free every last true child of this dark gunman, the great African Great Leap Forward. As Obama begins to move Africa more and more away from the alliance on imperialist devils and towards self-reliance, the town has come to begin a great challenge in the quest of aut autarchy, industrialization. To say that Africa lacks major industrial centers would be a massive understatement. While our blessed homelands are not without a share of industries, they are small and nearly all in the hands of the white devils. In order to solve this, and bring Africa into the modern age, Obama has ordered the creation of several industrial model cities based heavily on other such industrial cities in American Europe. These new cities shall bring, finally, the industry and jobs that have been so long absent in the dark continent. While well, the cities are a long way off. As construction has only just begun, we have already begun to see a massive boast in our civilian economy despite reported human rights abuses and forced labor squads. It's no, no time at all. We shall finally be industrially free from the white devil. Africa shall dig yourself up by the bootstraps. Nice. I love Africa. Oh, now it's quite a bit of aluminum, too. So right, we can trade for one of them, probably. Nice. Social conservatives, you guys don't have very much. So we're not going to go to order for a while just because we really need to wait. Our final salary, if you want to go that, please go ahead. Well, Chargers Fantasy. Black Internationalism. And we'll do that with Focus 2. And Swirling Skies. Our armed forces must take the skies. We're to fully and effectively combat those imperialist forces that have played your continent. New air bases will need to be constructed, for we will still lack airships within our borders. More importantly, we reach out to the friendly regimes and black market contacts in order to acquisition enough planes to start the Kenyan Air Force, as well as the plans needed to manufacture own flying beasts once our industrial centers are up and running. But I think we're going to end it there, and we'll continue on with tomorrow's next episode. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we continue conquering the rest of Africa. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.